Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security and in-depth analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And this session will certainly help you to crack prelims and mains examinations because I would be emphasizing throughout my lecture, I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which are from the newspaper. So definitely from the newspaper, I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be certainly useful to identify the factual and analytical questions which are very very useful for preliminary examinations. So thereby the keywords and the key, key phrases I would also make sure that not only identifying the factual and analytical questions for prelims but I will make you get into the practice of imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing that is for the mains examination. So certainly you will be benefited from prelims point of view and also from mains point of view in regards to the answer writing wherein when you are into the mode of imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answers. Your, your answers will be certainly precise and concise and this is what the UPSC will be demanding from you that is from a civil servant as friends that your answers in the mains examinations have to be precise and concise and by imbibing the keywords and the key phrases which I would be making you prepare into the mode of imbibing the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing and that will certainly help you to score more marks in the mains examination. So certainly my session will help you to crack prelims and mains both for 2020 as well as 2021. But prior to that you have notification in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English which is India's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed you will have live unlimited and recorded courses from the unacademy and the other privileges what you get are the daily live classes, live tests and quizzes, structured courses and unlimited access to all the live and recorded courses and these are the educators at an academy and the courses offered are economy, environment and ecology, current affairs and along with others which you can also see it on your screen and as well as essay writing, internal security and social issues will also be part of your courses in Let's Crack UPSC CAC English and in regards to the subscription that is for Let's Crack UPSC CAC English subscription you have 12 month subscription wherein the original price is 44,000 and the use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 wherein you can avail 10% discount on the original price that is 44,000 and the discounted price would be 39,600. So using my code that is SBT10 will uh, make you get or avail the 10% off on the 44,000. As well you have the 24 month subscription along with 12 months. The original price is 64,000. Do use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 wherein you will get 10% or you can avail 10% off on the original price which is 64,000 and the discounted price would be 57,600. So do Use my code both for 12 month subscription and also for 24 month subscription and do avail the 10% off on the original price that is for Let's Crack UPSC CAC English. And uh, this session is in regards to the analysis of the Hindu newspaper wherein I would be reiterating and re-emphasizing my tagline that is emphasizing of the keywords and the key phrases and by emphasizing of the keywords and the key phrases you will be certainly beneficial for the prelims as well as mains examinations so my session analysis of the hindu newspaper will certainly be useful and make sure that you are watching the video right from the beginning till the end so that you will be benefited thoroughly for the preliminary as well as mains examinations and you will also get into the mode of the practice of imbibing the keywords and the key phrases which will be very very important for the prelims as well as mains examinations and uh, before I get into the topic I would say very good morning to 
everyone who is in the live and also in the live chat siddharthan shravani bhuvanesh bhuvi malvika sajivan mauna sri very good morning to you all and welcome to analysis of the indo newspaper by sandeep bhushan tumala and in regards to shravani she says good morning sir when will be the quiz certainly i am working on it i am little bit what you say the program is i uh, have to schedule it and then we will get into it definitely dinagar as is as also joined uh, vanakam namaste very good morning to you dinagar <laughs> and today news is that there is uh, the news which talks about in regards to again lac that is the troops that the troops along the lac in the eastern ladakh so definitely the uh, what the news talks about is that the chinese troops have neither vacated nor removed any kind of prefabricated or semi permanent structures this is very very important because we, there is a military engagement there is a military engagement and also diplomatic engagement and we have seen that on june 6th there was partial disengagement there was partial disengagement on june 6th on june 6th but later on we have seen the incident on june 15th and june 16th June 15 and June 16, we have seen the march of 20 brave Indian soldier. And post that, we haven't seen the Chinese troops vacating or removing any kind of prefabricated or semi-permanent structure along the LAC, especially in the Ladakh, especially in the Ladakh district. And Chinese have reduced the presence definitely in the eastern Ladakh. They haven't, but they have reduced the presence in the Finger area. That is. the uh, i was talking about pyongyang sail lake you have fingers from 1 to 8 so definitely they have reduced the presence please do understand they have reduced the presence they have not moved back an inch please do understand this especially in the eastern ladakh they have not vacated nor removed any kind of prefabricated that means the tents the tents i'm talking about the semi permanent structures or the tents which they have erected they haven't removed it and in the pyongyang lake near the what is a finger area from 1 to 8 they have reduced the presence of the chinese troops but they have not moved an inch also an inch that is what is very very important and the government also task the this is important this is important for the prelims point of view for the prelims point of view so the government has also task whom the national technical research organization so it is the government of india which has asked or it has given a job to the national technical research organization to what to analyze the satellite images so definitely we have come up with the satellite images that the chinese troops have come up with the prefabricated and semi permanent structure along the lac especially in the eastern ladakh especially in the eastern ladakh that is in the galwan valley that is in the galwan valley so the government has an, uh, got that satellite images shared by the foreign researchers please do understand shared by the foreign researchers on the social media wherein the government of india has given a task to the national technical research organization this is very very important the government has given to whom given to national technical research organization for what to analyze the satellite images and definitely the officials are saying that there is noticeable thinning of presence of chinese troops along the three friction point so definitely that means there is a little bit of what you say the chinese troops are in number they are reducing but definitely they haven't not moved an inch they haven't not moved an inch and the three friction points we all know it is galwan valley and then in regards to the hot springs and then the pyongyang sail lake so definitely now because it is thinning now there is no patrolling no patrolling happening no movement of troops and then and vehicles no movement of troops and vehicles and no fresh construction activity so because of the thinning of the activity they have not totally moved out but they are still what do you say in the mode of not patrolling no patrolling is going on no movement of troops and vehicles are going on and no fresh construction activity is going on along the lac and the three areas which i was talking about the the conflict areas are the galwan valley hot spring areas and the finger area or hot spring uh, area and the finger area that is along the pyongyang lake see this is pyongyang lake wherein you have the from finger 1 to finger 8 as i have said there is an issue there is an issue because because we have seen that as i said india has that control 
your entire control from finger 1 to finger 4 it has control from finger 1 to finger 4 and it patrols from finger 1 to finger 8 please do understand this i have repeated a number of times i am saying once again and that is what now the issue is also in the finger area and galwan valley we have seen yes the uh, june 15th and 16th incident is the one which is the which very clearly depicts that what is that is happening actually in the conflict area of the galwan valley and china has the control in the finger 8 in the finger 8 and the patrol from finger 8 to finger 2 the patrol from finger 8 to finger 2 that is china and india has control from finger 1 to finger 4 and the patrol from 1 to 8 so this is where the issue is now that this is where the situation is very bad at the finger 4 finger 4 as i reiterated yesterday also that at the finger 4 at the finger 4 there are chinese troops who have put their a presence that is prefabricated tents they have gone ahead with erecting tents they have stopped there they have stationed there and they are stopping the indian troops from moving ahead from the finger four to finger eight to patrol and that is why now the situation is very bad and the other one area is the depth on cleanse yesterday also have the what do you say uh, in depth i've spoken about the strategic importance of the depth on planes yesterday and you have this here the depth on planes and the distance from 4 to 8 so definitely the chinese troops have stopped at finger 4 that is indian troops not to patrol or, uh, along the finger 8 and the distance from finger 4 to finger 8 is 8 kilometers so we are unable to patrol that 8 kilometers which way were we in that is indian troops were patrolling earlier patrolling earlier and if you look at the other point is that in April, please look at, I was, or we were discussing that May 5th was the first time wherein we have got to know that Chinese troops have entered along the LAC and created a problem along the territory of India, fine. And then it was on June 5th and June 6th. We have seen the military engagement and the diplomatic engagement, June 5th and June 6th. And on June 15th and 16th, we have seen the martyr of Indian soldier, 20 Indian soldier. And again on June 26, that is today, I mean yesterday, we have seen that the India has warned China that you cannot go ahead with altering, altering the status quo. Because I was repeatedly saying the status quo, that is China is each and every time trying to alter the status quo. And India has warned China that they cannot try to alter the status quo because it damages the peace with peace and tranquility between both the countries and if China does so to alter the status quo then India has warned China that it will have ripples and repercussions ripples and repercussions that means there would be definitely a, a situation the consequences would be very dire that means it will be very a gripping situation wherein both have to face the consequences which we do not want it and then we have seen again on may 18th also there was violent clashes and many indian soldiers have been injured on may 18th so definitely from may 5th till again may, june 5th and 6th before the military engagement and diplomatic engagement has started it was on may 18th we have seen violent clashes before this june to june 15th and 16th there was one more clash on may 18th also may 18th also and this is the image of finger one finger two three four finger five six seven and eight and then india has control see you look at here the blue line is india one the blue line is india one and india has control from one to four one to four China has what is it from finger 8 they have control till finger 8 but they patrol till finger 2. India has control till finger 4 but they patrol till finger 8 but this is the area the star mark. The star mark is what the standoff between India and China since May 2020 and here they have come up with their campaign. I mean they are erecting the prefabricated tents and they have stopped the I mean Indians or Indian troops from having or getting into the patrol from finger 4 to finger 8. So this is what is the precarious or the finger 4 is the conflict zone between India and China in the, along the LSE. And Bhuvanesh Bhuvi says, will you provide books for 2 years subscription? 
in an academy oh okay <laughs> you are asking about the books uh, there will be uh, pdf files uh, bunesh there will be pdf files definitely that will be very very uh, necessary and it will be very very important also for you in regards to both prelims and mains they will be providing you the pdfs and there is another news which talks about hardship may push people into making drugs for a living so united nations office on drugs and crime has come up with a report this is very very important again for prelims and also making it uh, uh, at least one or two lines in regards to the covid 19 and its impact on the illegal drug that is united nation office on drugs and crime on drugs have come crime has come up with a report that is world drug report 2020 it has come up with a report that is world drug report 2020 and this is very important for the prelims point of view and it is highlighting that there would be a possible consequences in regards to the illegal drug production so definitely there is a situation that there would be illegal drug production not only production supply and consumption illegal drug production supply and consumption because of the covid 19 pandemic situation because of the post covid 19 pandemic situation the possible consequences are that there would be illegal drug production supply and consumption and what what will happen by this production supply and consumption it will have an adverse impact it will have an adverse impact on the economic hardship itself so definitely the illegal drug which has been produced supply and consumed it will have an adverse impact of the economic hardship because caused by the covid-19 pandemic situation and the report also very clearly states that there could be a increase in the number of people resorting to illegal or illicit activities in regards to the drugs in regards to the drugs and that drugs to make a living and definitely they will get into the mode of production supply and consumption if we keep us at consumption it is production and supply this will create a kind of illicit activities in regards to the drugs in regards to the drugs why because they will get into that illicit activities in regards to the production and supply of the drugs to make sure that they have their livelihood or they go ahead with continuing the livelihood or to make a living itself and that is what is important because of the economic crisis across the world the illegal drug production supply and consumption and also this will create illicit activities to come up with the livelihood that is taking into consideration the drug taking into consideration the illicit drug and this is the report which is being given by the united nations office on drugs and crime in its report that is world drug report 2020 world drug report 2020 and definitely we have seen that in the year 2008 when the economic crisis now we have seen that is in 2020 now we have uh, 2019 and 2020 2020 we are experiencing the kind of the economic crisis across the world and we have also seen the economic crisis in 2008 and post 2008 economic crisis there was certainly reduction in the budget which was allotted to the drug related in various countries or across the globe itself and this has created and or this has um, created or it has made it made a part to the overall increase in the drug use so definitely drug use is definitely important at the time they wanted to make sure that a living and why because post 2008 economic crisis also we have seen this kind of situation and that will lead to a shift to cheaper and more harmful drugs and this is what the consequences expressed by the world world drug report 2020 by the united nations office on drugs and crime okay before i get into the point anwar uh, chanib has uh, joined very good morning to you anwar chanib and uh, he has also said is it possible to crack upsc without coaching and keeping studies after job keeping studies after job are you working anwar are you working now if you are working definitely uh, you can uh, get into the mode of having this an academy platform and then you can uh, uh, learn from the an academy without coaching without coaching it's all it's all dependent on how you schedule your uh, preparation how you stick to your schedule how your consistency in regards to your schedule how you correlate your conventional type that is ncert book application to the contemporary one that is the current affairs so this strategy is very important macro and micro level strategy is very important to crack upsc without coaching for sure but you need to have that 
very clear in your mind what is your schedule how you are going to stick to your schedule how you are following the schedule and how you are linking how you are linking your conventional that is ncrt books or standard textbooks conventional topics to the current affairs topics and when you can do that yes absolutely you can track prelims uh, or, or else you can track both prelims mains and also you can get the job okay you are uh, working as a software engineer so i definitely uh, feel that you can cope up because of your merit and credibility merit and credibility the profession and the uh, the graduate is the gra you are an engineer graduate and you are a working professional that is software engineer you have the merit and credibility to go ahead with the uh, tracking the service without the coaching also sure and definitely many countries we have seen that is italy nigeria morocco and iran have also been into this entire drug trafficking or drug seizures have taken place and this will make sure that the afghanistan now it is the the march to june is the opium harvest in afghanistan opium this is the one which is again in regards to the drugs okay uh, opium all this and definitely the heroin Caesar in the Indian Ocean so definitely there would be a situation that the from the Afghanistan or from the Asian countries Southeast Asian countries it would move further into uh, Africa or from Africa into European countries and from again European countries into uh, Central America that is Mexico Mexico and further into US and US also so this kind of uh, movement can take place in regards to the heroin opium and then cocaine which are in regards to the drugs and there is a possibility from the Central Asia again further into Europe, uh, Africa and then into Mexico that is Central America and then further into Europe. So this, this uh, uh, movement does take place and this is what is important because from March to June the opium harvest is in Afghanistan and this is the year wherein actually this takes place, the movement of the drugs across the world. And this is the image which I have brought in for you for the better understanding. So we have seen this is the opium poppy. So opium poppy is cultivated here in Afghanistan and also in the, uh, the Bangladesh, Myanmar area along with the few Southeast Asian countries. And then again if we see coca, coca is also one which is uh, in the uh, Latin America. You have it in the Latin America and then opium also in the um, almost in the central america so definitely the movement if you look at the red it is opiates opiates are the one the one wherein it is being supplied being supplied opium as a drug is being supplied from this country southeast asian countries to us and then southeast asian countries to to africa fine again from africa to you have into europe into europe and further what you have the uh, brazil from brazil also you have movement to south africa and then in regards to the african continent and further into europe itself and then you have it in the latin america which again is being supplied to asia and from southeast asia directly into america and also you have lot of that movement that movement of this drug drug tra trafficking which takes place or the routes which you are talking about green and then this red one or the opiates and the green is the cocaine one so if you look at here it is all concentrated here if you look at that is latin america and then central america latin america and then central america is very highly concentrated in regards to the trafficking routes and especially mexico mexico the gulf of mexico or the mexico is the one within you have lot of drug cartels being uh, getting into the mode and then they are into business only itself so this is the one what the united nations office on drugs and crime has come up with the report that is world drug report and this is very very important for the prelims as well as mains examination and uh, vishnu murali has joined shivi bijal bijal one has joined very good morning to both of you so this uh, is definitely you will have a better understanding how it is you uh, look at it it is getting into india also it is getting into India also and from Southeast Asian countries it is into Australia and from again from you have from Southeast Asian countries further from Southeast Asian countries into Australia. So definitely the entire world is being affected by this drug cartels. And there is another news which talks about ASEAN states one of Southeast South China Sea tension. So definitely ASEAN has come up with an summit. 
ASEAN has come up with the summit and the ASEAN summit uh, in the leaders, the ASEAN summit leaders have raised a concern about China, raised a concern about China, that is China's activity in the disputed South China Sea. That is China's activity in the disputed South China Sea. And then Vietnam and Philippines have definitely raised a concern and it has warned the growing insecurity, growing insecurity in the Southeast Asia. Why? Because of China. Because of China, it is coming up with various activity in the South China Sea issue. So definitely the Vietnam and Philippines, which is also one of the countries which has been badly impacted by the hegemony of China in the Southeast Asian countries is Vietnam and Philippines also. So Vietnam and Philippines have warned the growing insecurity. Please do understand this keyword growing insecurity in the Southeast Asian, especially in the regional summit, the regional summit which has taken place in or on June 26, 2020, that is ASEAN regional summit has taken place. And uh, in the ASEAN summit, regional summit, the Vietnam and Philippines have raised the concern of the growing insecurity in the Southeast Asia. And then Hanoi and Malina, that is the capital city of Vietnam and Philippines, have raised the concern that Beijing is taking up unilateral decisions, taking up unilateral decisions, and it has come up with creation of new administrative districts. Please do understand, it has come up with the creation of who China has come up with the creation of new administrative districts on the South China Sea or in the islands wherein there is always uh, or, or else there is definitely a disturbance which is being created by China in the South China Sea. South China sea. So definitely Vietnam and Philippines have raised the concerns and it is saying that Beijing has come up with the new administrative districts in the South China Sea and then the Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte has also made the concern in the ASEAN and says that it is an alarming incident in the South China Sea and then along with that Vietnam Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan has also made it very clear and he has also made a statement that international institutions and international law please do uh, make a note of this key phrase what the Vietnam Prime Minister has said that international institutions and international laws have been seriously challenged during the global crisis, during the global pandemic, that is COVID-19 pandemic situation. And when the entire world is worried about the global COVID-19 pandemic situation to overcome it, China is definitely trying, trying to, not trying to, China is into the mode of expanding its territory, hegemony over the South China Sea, South China Sea, in the South China Sea, and also along the LAC in India. So definitely the Vietnam Prime Minister and then Philippines President are pushing for the presence especially in the exclusive economic zone. So this is what is important. I have made a point earlier also why China is aggressively getting into the South China Sea because you have the exclusive economic zones which is very very having more of resources in regards to the natural gas resources. So definitely China is get, having or trying to push or have its hegemony in the exclusive economic zones, especially in the South China Sea and both Vietnam and Philippines in its regional meeting that is in the ASEAN summit meeting, they have raised the concern that US has to have or US has to stop China in trying to have its bullying behavior in the South China Sea. So this is the South China Sea and this is China here and the Vietnam and the Philippines. All these are Philippine Islands. So you have this issue between Vietnam, I mean between China that is along with Vietnam. Definitely China has issue with Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, uh, Malaysia, Brunei and then Philippines. So uh, all these Southeast Asian countries. So definitely China has come up with uh, its presence in the exclusive economic zones and they have they have their hegemony over the parcel islands, Spartley islands and then the Scarborough Shoals. So this area Scarborough Shoals and the parcel islands and then this area is called as Spartley islands and they have drawn a line. China is claiming what do you say a, a area in the South China Sea that it belongs to it. That is, it is China's territory. That is, these areas, the blue dotted line, the blue dotted line. All these are the area wherein the China is claiming it is its 
its line the way we have the lac along india and china border the same way china has gone ahead with this line blue line and they are called as nine dash islands one two three four five six seven eight nine so they are called as nine dash islands please do understand it is very very important for geography map based question and better understanding about how or what is the issue in this south china sea why china with the southeast asian countries why china with the southeast asian countries so definitely these are the lines wherein they have claiming this they have created artificial islands and that is what vietnam and philippines are they are raising the concerns that they have come up with the ad new administrative districts in the islands administrative administrative districts in the islands and that is very very important please do understand for a conceptual and better understanding what are the issues the issues between between china and the southeast asian countries are the parsal islands spratly islands this carbore shoals and the nine dash islands and this blue lines are the one wherein the china claims that line as the its property its property and the red one is the disputed island so definitely they have even in the disputed islands they have come up with the the concerns raised by vietnam and philippines is that they have come up with the new administrative creation of new administrative districts creation of new administrative districts in the islands in the islands and that is what look at it the hegemony of china in the south china sea and this is very very important for you for the prelims as well as mains conceptual about the issue between china and and south china uh, or else southeast asian countries in the south china sea and you have this as exclusive economic zone exclusive economic zone you have here this areas exclusive economic zones and you have the another news which talks about un 75 declaration delayed so there is a declaration which has to be actually come up by last night itself but it was delayed and the five eyes five eyes and this is again very important for prelims point of view and a better understanding you as a civil servant aspirant preparing for civil servant aspirants you need to know all that what we have discussed earlier g7 e7 and then i have also said this in the or you say one of the unacademy special classes about the five eyes five eyes and then what are the five eyes five eyes are the countries that is us uk australia new zealand and canada us uk australia new zealand and canada along with india have objected have objected the use of this shared vision of common future why because they feel that this phrase that is the shared vision of common common future is closely associated to the chinese communist party ideology is closely associated to the chinese communist party ideology and that is why they are they haven't still or they have objected for the use of the phrase for the un 75 declaration that is shared vision of common future and wherein especially chinese president xi jinping is definitely going ahead with this articulation of this country's vision for the world that is community with a shared future for mankind so what xi jinping has that he says the community with a shared future for mankind so it is almost uh, a little changes amendment has been done but the declaration says that shared vision of common future as it is very closely associated with the chinese communist, uh, communist party ideology that is why that is why that is why the five eyes haven't really uh, come to the uh, acceptance along with the india or they have objected it and definitely we have seen the kind of china's relations it has with india australia and also us has created a kind of objection to the phrase to the phrase and then objecting countries have come up with a resolution they say that i'm just reading this just for information or probably you can uh, look it for the international relations for ir point of view that is gs paper 2 for gs paper 2 you can look at this we will work together what the objecting countries are saying that we will work together with partners 
to what to strengthen coordination to strengthen coordination and global governance strengthen coordination of global governance for common good of present and future generation and to realize our shared vision for a better future as envisaged in the preamble of un charter and this for the in ir international relations gs paper 2 main point you can have a look at it and then karthik uh, narendran uh, very good morning to you karthik and then it says objective of ir the objective of ir is that def definitely they are having into the mode that they will definitely kind of uh, have the grip in the united nations general assembly in the united nations general assembly and the one that is us uk australia new zealand and canada canada are the one which have that uh, kind of close proximity and then they would definitely have their presence whenever there is anything which is against those countries so definitely they are the one which is having a better better say in the united nations general assembly also and economy in deep troubles and it will shrink to 5 percentage who is saying this that is snp that is global rating agency global rating agency snp has made it very clear that it has come up with a report saying that the indian economy will be in a deep trouble and it will contract to 5 percentage that is this year that is 2020 and then 2021 2020 2021 this fiscal year india's economy will be badly hit and it will be contracted to five percentage and yesterday also have shown you with the diagram with the figure that is in regards to the global economy in regards to the what imf has come up yesterday imf has come up the uh, global uh, global economic world uh, global uh, economic outlook so there it has made it very clear that the global uh, country, economic countries, the developing countries, and then the developed countries. How the 2020, how it will contract, and then 2021, how it will again surge. So definitely, the difficulties in regards to the economic uh, Indian economy is because of the first reason is because we were unable to. What you said there is they're not unable to. We were into the mode of difficulty in containing the virus. And then we had this anemic policy response that means not very aggressive policy response and vulnerabilities in the financial sectors have created or leaded or uh, made into the point that Indian economy has been fallen or it will be contracted to 5 percentage but it will rebound in 2021 it will rebound in 2021 definitely and the region's economy when we are talking about the region's economy so it has come up with the india's economy and the region's economy is asia pacific so please look at it the global rating agency has spoken about or uh, come up with the india india's economy and then asia pacific region also asia pacific region it will squeeze to 1.3 percentage minus 1.3 but 2021 it will have a gain of plus 6.9 percentage and in regards to the china also it has come up with the report so china's uh, snp says that china's uh, economy that is it will be now 2020 and 2021 it will be plus 1.2 percentage and in 2021 2022 it will be plus 7.4 percentage so along if you look at all the countries in the globe it is only the china which is not contracted at this moment but it is in a positive positive growth so that is what the imf uh, sorry in regards to the imf has said earlier wb has said asian development bank has said and global rating now snp is also making a pitch that how the india's economy has contracted and what are the reasons reasons are like difficulties in con containing the virus anemic means very or like little not aggressive uh, policy responses and vulnerabilities in maintaining the financial sectors so definitely we have looked at this in regards to the economy point of view and this in regards to the prelims current affairs international relations and also mains point of view because definitely we are looking at what the un charter has said un charter has said so this is also very important for prelims in regards to the ir international relations and this one definitely it will be very very useful for you in regards to geography map based and then we have looked at how there is a dispute in the south china sea by created by china 
along the southeast asian countries in the south china sea and then the philippines and then vietnam have raised the concerns in the regional grouping summit that is the asean summit that there is there is definitely a growing insecurity in the southeast asia growing insecurity in the southeast asia especially because china has come up with creation of new administrative districts in the islands in the islands and this again we have looked at how the drug trafficking can take place drug trafficking can take place because of the covid-19 pandemic situation and its impact on economy and its impact on economy and how the drug peddlers or the cartels will get into the mode of the illicit activities especially into the drug production and supply and consumption because of trying to have or trying to make a living out of this illicit activities and that was a report by united nation office on drugs and crime and the report is world drug report and this is very important that report is very important for films and this for a better understanding i have shown you how it is in regards to the finger four finger one to finger eight and what is along the pyongong se lake pyongong so lake and here again i have spoken about the entire scenario right from april not from may may but right from april how we are having these skirmishes not from may 5th but from april itself between india and china troops along the finger pyongong lake so definitely i have also explained about the importance or strategic importance of debsan plain both for india as well as how chinese troops are trying to get into the debsan plain and they did they did get into the debsan plain the way they have entered in 1962 and again in 2013 and now also 2020 now again they have got into galwan valley pangongso lake and then now again in the debsan plain which is very close to the Dawlat Beg Oldi and Karakoram Pass, and that is very very important in regards to the strategic move by Chinese troops into Indian territory. And then here, what is very important is the government has also tasked the National Technical Research Organization to analyze what the satellite images, which wherein it very clearly shows that the prefabricated or semi-permanent structures which have been taken up, built by the Chinese troops along the LAC, that India has given the task to the so that is very important for prelims point of view so we have covered in regards to the entire all the topics which are very very important for prelims as well as mains emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases wherever it was necessary so that you will make a note of it and it will be very very useful for you for both prelims and mains so do like the video share the video uh, while you are uh, watching subscribe the let's crack upsc cs english and while you are subscribing for 12 and 24 months do use my code spt10 that is sandeep bhushan kumar 10 to avail 10% discount and then if you haven't still downloaded the anacademy learners app do download the anacademy learners app and then be part of anacademy special classes because you can have access to various courses once you download the anacademy learners app and be part of the anacademy special classes you can have the various courses access to various coaches courses by various educators and you can also have access to upsc cs english in 10 minutes channel and telegram link is let's crack upsc csc english and you can also connect me to my telegram link that is t.me slash sandeep bhushan svt t.me slash sandeep bhushan svt again see you at 10 15 am in regards to the in-depth analysis of the editorials and articles and thank you and all the best for your civil services preparation and thank you all and then do stick to your schedule maintain consistency take care of your physical and mental health while you are in the preparation so this this is very important your physical and mental health is very very important to get along the entire preparation and then get through the exam positively thank you see you at 10 15 am